What is up, people? So I did a video yesterday where I uh, uh, looked at one lady talking about how quantum physics and Hinduism are related. I did one section of that entire interview. It's a very long video. And I told you that I'll do another section if this video is received well, if it's if this video is doing well and the video is doing well. So many of you clearly want to watch more of it. Now, uh, this is the video. If any of you want to go see, I have already reacted to this chapter, which is uh, material universe versus consciousness. And now I'm going to react to this chapter, which is quantum physics versus Vedanta. So I've not seen this at all. So this is a fresh reaction and we have our uh, fallacy board ready. Yesterday's fallacies are on the board. Let's see if we can find any new fallacies and maybe even a bingo. But just to recap what we saw yesterday, uh, I hope it's abundantly clear that uh, the way people try to connect physics uh, quantum physics sometimes and Hinduism and Vedanta, it's always done with a huge misrepresentation, making a lot of fallacies because there is no such connection. And we will hopefully see more of that today. But yeah, let's watch and judge for ourselves. So what are the similarities between quantum physics and Vedanta? Can you just um, list out, you know, what you would say are the uh, similarities? Actually, um, I see it is, it is so obvious in the sense it's not like you have to take a leap of faith and arrive, do some deductions to arrive at the similarities between quantum physics and Vedanta. It is so, so obvious that if you like... Uh, yeah, I think you do have to make a huge leap in your creative imagination to arrive at these supposed similarities. Uh, you know, uh, anybody who knows Vedanta and learns quantum physics, they can make this connection. In fact, uh, many... will just end up confirming their bias because whatever they learn, I've already marked confirmation bias. Whatever they do learn in uh, quantum physics, they're just gonna find, oh, I, I know how that uh, makes sense of you, uh, which part of Vedanta connects to this. And they'll end up uh, making a huge leap in imagination and uh, connecting the two. That's generally what I've seen. See, I'm very open. I'm very open to be shown that I'm wrong. But every single version of this that I've seen, people are making huge leaps of creative imagination. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, there's no clear link between uh, quantum physics and Vedanta. Western uh, scientists are now talking about this uncanny correla cor correlation between quantum physics and Vedanta. Now first, let us look at what quantum physics is saying. One of the first and the most basic experiments of quantum physics is called double slit experiment. And when they did this experiment, what that was when they discovered that particles do not exist until they are observed. Yeah. That is wrong. Anyone who knows uh, Young's double slit in the audience, and I'm sure most of you will uh, know because they teach you that in school in physics, Young's double slit doesn't say that particles come into existence when they're observed. It says that the photon has a particle nature and a wave nature. And when you observe them, they show the particle nature. And when you don't, they show wave nature. It's not that they go out of existence when they're not observed. The act of observation when a conscious being observes only then particles come into existence. See how she's trying to make these huge leaps just to connect. See, she's saying when a conscious being observes, when she says that she's able to connect the word conscious to consciousness and where that has a role in Vedanta. You don't need a conscious observer. All you need is photons to bounce off the particles and uh, they will provide energy and that is the observer effect. You take a minute for this to sink in. That is. The founders of quantum physics made this statement. Nothing exists until it is observed. That statement was never made. You can talk to any physicist that you want. And that statement, they will never say the statement. Oh my God. See, see how she's bending what she's saying so much just to connect it with Vedanta. Can you, uh, when you listen to the statement, does it not bring to your mind all the Vedantic Mahavakyas we have. When you listen to that statement, it does. But uh, that statement is a huge misrepresentation. It's a straw man, which is already marked. Straw man. Heard. What does Vedanta say? Vedanta says, 
consciousness is the fundamental principle of the universe universe is consciousness and everything arises in consciousness exists in consciousness and resolves into consciousness okay this word consciousness is never mentioned in quantum physics quantum physics has nothing to do with consciousness vedanta has everything to do with consciousness and there is also one peculiar feature of consciousness when you say this whole universe is created in consciousness when you think of a process of creation we normally think of somebody like like i say i may make i build a building then first i have to plan it in my head i have to acquire the right knowledge and actually construct it right so uh, i'm an active participant in the creation that's how that's how we think of creation but brahman the relationship between brahman and universe is different brahman creates the universe by simply witnessing it his role in creation of the universe is being a witness to the universe that is why this consciousness this brahman is called sakshi chaitanyam the witness consciousness i hope the kind of misrepresentation of quantum physics she has done to bring this bridge between quantum physics and vedanta is clear and in vedanta and in physics the same questions have arisen how can anything be created by simply observing it how can you look at something and create it so if you just think back for a moment it happens every day in our life in vedanta this is the analogy they give when you are sleeping when you are when you dream when you have a dream you, the whole dream universe is created by you but what did you do what was your active role in creating the universe the only reason the dream exists is because you see it right. the mere act of witnessing the this is what quantum physics is right a dream brings it into existence in your mind right that's the relationship between brahman and universe the mere act of witnessing the universe brings the universe into existence now this is the symbolism of the sleeping ranganatha you uh, in my part of the world in south india he is a very um, uh, like he is a very loud deity ranganatha sleeping on his snake bed he is supposed to be sleeping in yoga nidra his sleep is called yoga nidra and because of his sleep the universe is created it is believed so it is just like vishnu is sleeping and dreaming up the universe it is the same analogy is this analogy of advaita vedanta that is represented in the sleeping vishnu is in vishnu in ananta shayanam and can you see the uncanny similarity between quantum physics which says the mere act of observation brings particles into existence and advaita vedanta which says brahman is merely a sakshi the creator of the universe is the sakshi chaitanyam someone who doesn't know physics at all is like wow this is amazing see all this will appeal to only people who don't understand science who've never seen or read a textbook of 12 standard physics in their lives or has forgotten it. the witness consciousness who brings the universe into existence so this is and this is not the only resemblance um, pile ji what i also want to tell you is now this finding of quantum physics many scientists are confused by it they don't know what to make of it in fact uh, the most brilliant mind of our times albert einstein did not agree with the finding do you really believe in the moon is it's a philosophical question i have to look up this quote but usually there is a religion quote that says uh, something like life is meaningless without religion that's always quoted out of context things of quantum physics he said how is it possible that things can come into existence only when you witness it do you mean to say that the moon does not exist when nobody is seeing this this was his question so but if you are a student of advaita vedanta it is very easy to resolve all the paradoxes of advaita vedanta if you look at it from the lens of i mean Uh, you can resolve the paradoxes of quantum physics when you apply the principles of advaita vedanta if you begin with the prima- premise that the whole universe is consciousness and the entire material world arose from this consciousness and this consciousness is only a witness then all these paradoxes which we which we come across in quantum physics can easily be resolved incredible wow um then do you know what it just um 
it's incredible because I'm just uh, smiling within saying things that you inherit. Uh, I hope, you know, you get a general sense of this is exactly how most people who try and connect physics and Vedanta do it. And uh, I hope this video gives you a fair idea of how much misrepresentation they tend to do just to make that connection. But yeah, that's about it. I'll see you in the next one.